I've been threatening to make this video for a while now, so here we go. Video editing is a super broad topic. Folks spend years studying this stuff and improving their technique. So one video cannot be comprehensive. Kind of like my book on photography. <coughs> Shameless plug. This is the place to start that conversation off with some tips and tricks. Here are five super general tips for editing video on your phone featuring PowerDirector running on Android. Tip one, learn the UI. This is the basics. If you're familiar with video editing in any form from high-end workstations to using iMovie on a Mac, the layout in a mobile app will look very familiar. In the top center, we've got the video preview window. Underneath, we've got individual tracks. The first is your main video timeline. Under that, we've got video overlay tracks, and under that, we'll have standalone audio tracks. This allows us to work on one main video and insert B-roll, photos, or text on top of that main video track. If you have more than three video and audio tracks, this section will start to scroll vertically to help you organize your timeline. Sliding your finger around will scrub through your project. Pinching will zoom in and zoom out. Tapping individual clips will highlight that clip for specific editing. To the left of the video preview, we have our editing tools. When no clips are selected in your timeline, the tools here allow you to add clips to your main timeline, add an overlay, or insert a general effect on the main timeline. Tapping on a specific clip in your main timeline will change these options to edit or delete the clip selected. And now we get a new menu with a ton of options. Volume, rotating, smoothing, speed adjustments, flipping, reversing, panning, and zooming, duplicate clips, stabilization, cropping, and color adjustments. If we tap on an overlay clip, it'll offer some of the same editing tools, plus opacity, chroma keying, and fading. You can edit green screen footage on your phone these days. If you just want to shorten a clip, that can be done with these bubbles at the head and tail of every selection, or by using the scalpel, you can just slice, you can cut where the cursor is, and you can control the audio mix for every audio track and video track on your timeline, or you can also adjust audio per clip. And lastly, in between each clip, you have the option to add a transition and control how long that transition should last. A basic overview of where the main tools live, but you will want to play around. Familiarize yourself with this layout and get it to that point where it's a little bit more muscle memory accessible. Tip number two, file management is sexy. Super sexy. One of the key advantages for Android, being able to organize files exactly the way that you might want. I'm a big fan of using a third-party file manager like FX File Explorer. Lots of phones will come with their own files app, and there are plenty of other third-party solutions to choose from. Now, if you're shooting from your phone's camera, then we know where those photos and videos will be stored, usually in a DCIM or camera folder. But if you're regularly producing from a phone, you'll probably want to store project files in separate folders from where your phone usually saves photos, music, and videos. As you look for files in PowerDirector, the app will automatically include any folders where those file types are stored. So naming a folder project will be easier to find than looking through a music folder for the project audio you want. This organization helps in both directions. You can more easily find the content you want to edit but you can also better keep your project media out of the way of your general entertainment. Working on a phone comes with some compromises. So a little organizing up front makes the media selection process significantly faster while editing. And don't underestimate the value of cloud backup. I keep all my music and media video assets on a NAS that I can access anywhere in the world I have internet access. So if I ever lose something or forget to back up my project files, I can still get my work done out in the field. Tip number three. What to do about shooting in high quality? Yeah, our phones have a few compromises. Here, we're capturing some crazy high quality video, but PowerDirector will need to convert and resample files if you're going to use multiple tracks of video. If you're just throwing text or a photo on top of 4K video footage, no worries, you can edit that 4K video directly. But if you're stacking video files, then you need to convert. You'll want to make sure you have extra space on your phone. Space for the original file, space for the resampled file, and space for the final render. I try to mitigate that by primarily leaning on phones with expandable storage. In 2019, that looks like an LG G8 or a Galaxy S10. Plenty of room for apps on the phone, 
I recently upgraded to a 256 gigabyte card, which is fast enough to record super high bitrate 4K video and that was less than 50 bucks. As a practical example, I shot daily vlogs for a week while covering Computex. Now, starting on Monday, I maxed out a 128 gigabyte card Thursday morning. Now, this isn't a concern if you're mostly shooting in 1080p, you won't have to transcode, but if you've got a fairly recent phone, the quality advantages of 4K are pretty rad. Tip number four, edit in the moment. Okay, people are quick, tripping over themselves to parrot all the compromises of producing content from a mobile device. But this tip is one of the major advantages of working on a phone. Edit as you go. The editing process is a little slower on a phone, right? Smaller screen, touch input can be a little less precise, unless you're using a mouse, which you probably aren't. We get all that, but where do you make up some of that time? No file transfers. When I shoot vlogs or family videos, as soon as I'm done collecting the clips I want, I can immediately drop them into an editing timeline. I can't overstate this enough. Ask some of your favorite YouTubers. They've all been out shooting events or trade shows and end up with footage they just never use. If a video is timely and you wait too long to edit, it's very likely that video will never get finished. Multi-track editing in camera is a significant reason why I keep coming back to mobile video production. Phones are powerful enough now that you can input other footage too if you want. I regularly pull in 4K clips from my Panasonic mirrorless camera. That does kind of negate the file transfer advantage, but a lot of us are working in mixed camera environments. Don't underestimate how crazy powerful your phone probably is. 100 megabit per second UHD video with high quality audio Premium phones from 2017 don't have many problems chewing that content up. So even taking the time to swap a memory card, you're still likely getting a clip into your timeline faster than if you have to break out a laptop. I've covered enough trade and media events where at the end of the evening, I'm sitting on the floor scrubbing my video timeline with a laptop looking for a power outlet. Phones are way more convenient, discreet, and easier to charge on the go. Tip number five, there's no magic solution. You just gotta do it more than once. Familiarity is critical. The more you use these kinds of apps or services, the better you get. There's just no way around it. You need to practice. But the beautiful thing is we live in a media heavy environment and a little effort in sharing your story goes a long way. We are really used to how terrible phone video looks because we mostly see terrible portrait handheld video with zero editing. Think about those little family moments we all collect, how touching it is to get a personalized message. Your relatives won't be able to articulate, oh, I really like how you used a half second fade transition in that birthday video, or did you color correct for this? It looks really good. But when you cut up a couple clips, slap some music on it, people definitely recognize that effort. Let's take that one step further. If you're trying to share experiences, vlog, cover news online, just tackling some of these editing basics will set your content miles ahead of the vast majority of people putting out raw video. I think this stuff is really fun and it's easy to stay in shape. You probably have plenty of stuff to practice on. Five tips, folks. Like I said at the top, one video cannot be comprehensive and I try not to focus on specific phones or lean too hard on individual apps or services. So while I am showing the tools I use, the philosophy behind most of these tips should translate well to any other phone or editing app that you want to use. If you liked this conversation and want to dig deeper into individual topics, drop some comments down below. If this kind of content is getting shares and comments, I'd love to turn it into a more regular series. As always, folks, thanks so much for watching, for sharing these videos, subscribing to this channel. More than just nerding out on a shiny, expensive phone at launch, you have a supercomputer in your pocket. So let's really get our money's worth out of it. If you would like to help support the production of those conversations, there are links in the description down below this video, or you could consider joining the list of names scrolling by on your screen right now. It's a really fun, growing community of like-minded tech pals, an awesome resource for me as I plan future videos, and what you're watching right now would likely never have been produced had it not been for their input. So I hope you can check that community out. I think we have a lot of fun. Now, you know where you can find me around the rest of the internet at some gadget guy on the Twitters and the Twitch, the Instagrams and the Facebooks. 
and I will catch you all on the next video.